This is Valley News Live at noon. Search efforts continue this afternoon for a man who jumped into the Red River in the Northern Valley. Around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, East Grand Forks police responded to a report of an unwanted person. Officers talked with the man and he left, saying he was heading back to Grand Forks. A short time after, an East Grand Forks officer reported the same man had jumped into the river near the Sorley Bridge. Officers tried to save him by throwing a buoy and a life jacket, but he was not able to grab them. Officers lost sight of the man, man a few moments later. Officials tell us they know who the man is. They will release his name at the conclusion of the investigation. We'll continue to track this story and bring you the latest on ValleyNewsLive.com. Things are definitely heating back up in the valley, and as temps rise, so do our chances to see some storms. Let's go to meteorologist Lisa Green with a quick look at the weather. Lisa? Well, good afternoon. Yes, we're going to be seeing storms developing as soon as today and lasting into your Friday as well. So enjoy the quiet right now. We've got blue sky in Fargo. Temperatures have been rising. We're well into the 80s. In fact, some of us upper 80s. It's 84 in Fargo, 86 in Grand Forks, and Fergus Falls at 88 degrees. There's some moisture coming in with that too, so you're starting to feel that humidity come up as well. Here's a look at the latest radar and satellite picture. We're nice and clear across most of the valley. There are some areas where we have some clouds to the south where some showers and thunder showers have been trying to get going. As we head into the afternoon and evening, we're going to be watching out for more development happening with this next round. So here's a look at our planner for Fargo. Going to warm up back into those 90s, so hot weather continues or returns, I should say, today. And notice toward the uh, 10 o'clock hour, a chance for some thunder showers in the Southern Valley. And we've got some new information for you that I want to update you about. We are now, if you were watching this morning, we were talking about how we're in a marginal risk, which was green. The Storm Prediction Center has upgraded us to a slight risk now. Not everybody, again, this is more Southern Valley with places like Wadena, back to Fergus Falls, and Sisseton included in that, a chance for a greater amount of severe weather. Quickly here, a slight risk also for Friday, and that's a more organized event, first alert weather day Friday, but we'll have to watch out today too, and I'll step you through the whole next 24 to 48 hours coming up here in just a couple of minutes. All right, we'll check back with you in a little bit. Thank you, Lisa. New at noon, city officials in Detroit Lakes are warning people about swimmer's itch on the lake. Swimmer's itch is a temporary rash caused by an allergic reaction to parasites. The city says it's going to treat the lake next week to, and to avoid swimmer's itch, you'll want to dry off completely after getting out of the water and shower if you can. Two people are in jail this morning, this afternoon, following a wild chase through the metro. Police say it started last night around 11 in Fargo when authorities tried to stop a pickup. The pickup then fled into Moorhead and back into Fargo, leaving police from both agencies on a chase. Eventually, Fargo police used stop sticks and had the pickup driver driving on its rim. That truck then turned onto a road under construction and got stuck in the mud along 21st Avenue South. The driver, 33-year-old Philip Murray, was arrested for reckless endangerment, among other citations. The passenger, 30-year-old Amy St. John, was arrested on a warrant. A police standoff that lasted nearly two days in Minnesota is over. Investigators say the suspect was shot. The standoff began overnight Tuesday in St. Michael after a 39-year-old man barricaded himself inside his home and shot at officers. Jeff Wagner has the details. Do we need to shelter in place? Is, or is it okay for my kids to play outside? Their questions Emily Holland and so many more have been asking for two days now as several law enforcement agencies carefully try to defuse a potentially deadly situation. A gunman identified as Brandon Gardis refusing to leave his home, even firing at officers. And knowing that uh, he's already shot rounds towards officers, uh, that's got to be paramount in the decisions. The incident started as a 911 call about a man with a gun arguing with a woman. Other children were in the home as well, but by Tuesday night, investigators say Gardis was alone inside. Wright County Sheriff Sean Derringer says officers have fired tear gas into the home. Heard here in the background of our video on several occasions. If he does get out, will he come this way? Will he go through the woods and come to my house? That's right, right there. WCCO's drone shows armored vehicles in Gardis's yard. The homes nearby were evacuated. 
Wednesday evening, the Bloomington bomb squad arrived along with some heavy equipment. So as long as he's going to communicate with us, sporadic as it is, we are going to continue to be here for as long as we can to try to bring a peaceful resolution to the situation. My kids just want to play outside and they don't understand what's going on. You know, they're a year and three years old, so they don't know, you know, but it's scary. Gardas is known to law enforcement in that area. He also has two active warrants, one for domestic assault and another for gun possession. The cleanup is underway over in Afghanistan. Dozens of homes were destroyed and over a thousand people have died after a 6.1 magnitude earthquake hit the eastern part of the country. More than 600 were injured and the death toll is expected to grow as information trickles in from remote that mountain villages. Yesterday's quake was the deadliest in Afghanistan since 2002. A rescue operation will prove a major test for the hardline Islamist Taliban authorities who took over the country last August after two decades of war and have been cut off from much international assistance because of sanctions. In our consumer alert, the American dream is out of reach for millions of Americans. That's according to Harvard University's annual State of the Nation's housing report. It found the income needed to qualify for a home has priced out about 4 million renters over the past year alone. The annual income needed to get a mortgage was $28,000 higher in April versus the same time last year. Experts say the record run up in home prices and rising interest rates are making the situation even worse. Coming up at noon, racing to the Red River Valley. Vintage cars from across the country will soon hit the streets of Fargo. But next, heating up and firing up some storms. Lisa Green is tracking the poten potential for severe weather in the next 24 hours.